We've come. We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We've come. We've come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding. Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome. From the time that you entered. November 2019, I was in meditation on what would be our yearly theme for 2020. The theme is really a misnomer, as I burn with the base scripture all year long. Usually, I would already have to phrase a theme around September or earlier the year prior. But I was getting into the waning months and still had no assurance. It was when I realized that a time threshold was going to be crossed as we moved into the third decade of the century. The significance of the year 2020 in my mind then became how could people be so blind. I prayed on that thought and the Lord gave me. Lord, let them see. I took refuge in the words that Elijah spoke to the Lord about his blind servant. Time is winding down, but there are still people who do not see the signs of the time. We must be about the Lord's business. He's coming back for a church without spot. Or blemish, meaning our dominion mandate, we must be on the mountains which influence society. Amen. God bless you and good evening. Once again, it's Dr. Schaefer, the pastor of Interceding Christian Center. And I'm giving God the glory for his mercy, his grace, but just being God all by himself. Welcome to the Interceding Moment Bible Study. I am so excited about this new series I'm getting ready to embark upon. Amen. I am so excited about it. But let's read some scripture and then we're going to move forward into this series. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. It says, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he, him, created male and female, created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hallelujah. That's Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. And I also want to read this in order to salt what I'm going to be speaking on for the next few weeks. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Ooh, chapter 7, verse 1, part 8. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it. This is Moses talking to the children of Israel. And had cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites the Gerashites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Oh, glory unto God. On this evening, what I want to do is I want to embark upon a Bible study teaching that's entitled the Seven Mountain Strategy. The Seven Mountain Strategy. The seven mountains, the seven mountains are certain pillars in society that Christians have to be on top of. We have to be the apostles of these particular mountains, amen? And God intended for us to take these mountains because if we are not on top of these mountains, then the enemy will take these mountains and we'll have the suffering that we have today, amen? You will see this as we continue on. In 1975, this... Uh, Man, Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ, and Lauren Cunningham, founder of Youth with a Mission, had lunch together in the state of Colorado. God has simultaneously been speaking to both of them about some things as it pertained to the generation that they were in. Amen? And God told them that they have to be change agents for this message that he gave them. During the same time period, Francis Schaeffer, who was a very famous theologian in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, had been given a similar message, and he was reaching out to his friends, uh, Bill Wright and Lauren Cunningham, uh, in order to talk to them about the message that God had given them. That message was for them to impact the nation. 
not just the nation, but to impact the nations. Amen. And and they 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 were all told, they were all dreaming in terms of how do we really impact the nation? How do we really impact the nation? And the Lord gave them that there are certain places that Christians have to be represented at in order to be impactful to the nations. There are seven spheres that Christians have to affect or mountains of society that Christians have to be on top of in order to impact a nation. Those seven mountains or seven spheres are business, government, media, arts and entertainment, education, family, and religion. Now, there are many subcategories uh, underneath those main subgroups underneath the main category. Uh, but in essence, these categories are those seven things that we as Christians have to be on top of. Amen. In essence, God was telling these three change agents that they have to do something in order to save a generation. They had to do something to or to impact the generation, and they had to be teaching something that a generation needed to hear. Amen? So we as Christians, as the saved of God, have to understand the importance of us being in charge. Simply like that. We have to understand the importance of Christians being in government, Christians being in arts and entertainment, Christians being in media. We have to understand the importance of Christians being in every aspect of life, business, education. We have to understand the importance of Christians, true, the saved of God, to be in specific areas in order for God's agenda to go forward. Amen? So in order to establish a godly society, a godly living environment on the earth, we have to be on top of these seven mountains. When the Lord said, my kingdom come, my will be done, he's talking about these particular areas in order for righteousness to prevail. Those seven mountains have to be conquered. They have to be conquered. And it's going to take people who are not afraid to stand up against what's wrong in order to conquer those mountains. Amen. It's going to take people who are not afraid of influencing for righteousness the things that they should be influenced. Those spirits of influence for all are, are we have to be able to influence everyone on earth by influencing things that go on on those mountains. Now, here's an eye opener for you. What occurs on the earth is important to the Lord. Oh, it's important to the Lord. It's important to the Father. Here's a refresher. If we get Genesis 1, 26 through 27, as I read it already, God still cares about the earth. He still cares about what we do in the earth. God is not going to take our dominion from us. He's not going to take our dominion from us, but he's going to hold us accountable for what we do with our dominion mandate. Amen. Look, I understand. Yes, this world is not our home. And no, we shouldn't value the things of this world. But what that's really saying is that the condition of the world that is in right now, it is not the condition that God wants it to be in. Amen. So this world is a place that we will eventually end up being on, but his kingdom will come. His will will be done. Hey, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our assignment is to subdue those seven mountains. Our assignment is to take full dominion in the earth realm so that God is glorified. Jesus came back and, 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 and to, to take what had been given to us that Adam had lost. And then Jesus spoke and said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. In other words, I give you the keys to ascend on top of those mountains. There are no gates that are going to stop you from ascending on top of those mountains. Listen to me. There are no gates that are going to stop you from ascending on top of those mountains. Jesus said, I give you your dominion mandate back. Amen. Amen. In the body of Christ today, we have too many people whose focus is getting into heaven, but not enough focus is exerted or being focused upon exerting our dominion on the earth, on the earth. 
They are so heaven bound that they are no earthly good to coin the phrase, to utilize a phrase that many have used before. Amen. So if our dominion wasn't important to God, if it wasn't important, the Lord's Prayer would read something else. It would say, your will be done in heaven and only heaven. But it doesn't say that. It says, your will be done in heaven uh, and on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. But the prayer is a kingdom prayer. His will be done. His kingdom come and manifest itself by evidence of the goodness that, that the earth should have in it. Amen. If our dominion mandate was not important, we would not be told that what is bound on earth is bound in heaven. If our dominion mandate wasn't important, then we would not be told that what's loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Our dominion mandate is important, and we have to be on top of our dominion mandate. That was a practice going on one time, and the children were singing, and, and I remember them singing this song. The system of the world were designed to take your confidence. I don't remember what the words were, the title of the song, but I believe it was a song by one of the latest artists who was saying, the system of the world, let's get back to Eden. That's what it was, sitting on top of the world. But see, the thing, the system of the world were designed to take your confidence. The enemy works very well in order to take our confidence away from us. He takes our confidence by presenting things to us that seem insurmountable. He presented David. He presented Goliath to David. And Goliath seemed to be insurmountable. But David's mindset has to be like our mindset. We serve a God who is so awesome, who's so powerful, who's so all-knowing that he can do anything but fail. Amen. So the systems of this world are those mountains that we must take back. We must take back those mountains. To master these gifts, we must view them as a mountain. In order to get back those things, we have to view them as a mountains, but mountains that we have been empowered to climb. We've been empowered to climb. The Lord has placed the talents within us to conquer all these mountains and for us to be on top. It's not amazing to me that Jesus did a lot of teaching in the mountains. It's not amazing to me that Jesus ascended on high in the mountains. It's not amazing to me that the enemy took Jesus up to a high place so that he could see the entire world. Because he knew the enemy knows and the Lord knows for sure that we should be on top of mountains. Amen. Amen. It is God's purpose for us to serve him in such a way, whereas if we serve him the right way, then God blesses us the right way. He blesses us and gives us the ability to be on top, to take these mountains and to remain on top of the mountains. Amen. So it's God's purpose for us to be on top. Hence, Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass, thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. I'm reading Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Amen. And verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. I don't know about you, but I want an overtaking blessing. I want a blessing to be so fulfilled, whereas I don't have enough room to receive it. I want a blessing to be an overflow. Amen. 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 So, so continue reading Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. It says, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It says, verse 3, Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. <laughs> blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, your children, the fruit of your body, and your work, your labor in the vineyards shall be blessed. And the fruit of thy cattle, you shall have cattle, amen. The increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. I know that not many people are flocking sheep. Not many people are, are uh, in this day and age, uh, uh, have cattle that they have. Not many people are farming as compared to how it used to be. I understand that. But what we're talking about is in the natural right now. What occurs right now. Amen. 
We're talking about the blessings such as a good job that provides for you. We're talking about the blessings of your health. We're talking about the blessings of your children. We're talking about your inheritance, your ability to be able to give unto your children. Amen. Verse 5, it says, Bless shall thy basket and thy store. Verse 6, Bless shall thou be when thou cometh in, and bless shall thou be when thou goest out. That's a blessing there. Amen. Amen. When you come in and when you go out. So you bless coming and going. I remember Saint used to say all the time. Amen. She used to say, every time I turn around, God is blessing me. And that's reminiscent of that. When you go in and when you coming out, God is blessing you. Amen. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. And thou shalt come out against thee uh, and they shall come out against thee one way and flee before these seven ways. Glory unto God. Amen. Amen. It kind of reminds me of how David walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And he was not afraid of what was coming against him because he knew that God was with him. And look, the same thing that applied to him applies to us. The enemy may come in one way, but the enemy is going to do all he can to get away from us because of the glory, the anointing, the blessings that God has placed in our lives. Amen. Now, this is an introduction of this overall, the overall series called the Seven Mountains. So I'm not going to get too deep into any individual mountain on this evening. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk, since I have talked somewhat about the mountains, I'm going to talk about why did we lose these mountains? Why did we lose these mountains? Well, I got about five or six things I want to say why we lost these mountains. Jesus instructed us in the Sermon on the Mount. One thing that he said that was very particular was to be salt and light in the world. And to go into all the world. To be salt and light in the world. Amen. And I want to add something else there. To not only be salt and light in the world, but to be the good soil. You cannot be salt and light unless you're good soil first. Good soil allows you to be able to to pick up certain things. Good soil allows you to be able to, to grow certain things so that you can be the salt and light in the world. Amen. And I want to add also to that is that he said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. And the New Testament is, is replicated with abominations that, that, that we are to influence, and uh, admonitions rather, that we are to influence the culture. That we are to influence the culture. How can we influence the culture if we are complicit with the culture? How can we influence the culture when it's okay to see our brothers do something wrong and not tell them that's wrong? We cannot influence the culture if we're going to be just like the culture. This is the reason we lost these mountains because we're trying to fit in too much with the culture. Amen. Amen. We don't need to be the flavor of the week when it comes to what the world is doing. Amen. We're supposed to be in this world, but not of this world. Think of salt as a flavor and light is the result of using that flavor for its purpose. The flavor is the wiring in its entirety. An electrician can wire a house, but if no meter is put in place, then no electricity will flow through the house. Without action, light will not come forward. If someone didn't reach out and hit the switch, light would not come forward. <laughs> Amen. That action is like electricity. When electricity is added to a wiring, then the light does come on. So why have we lost these mountains? The first thing we just talked about was simply we were not being the salt and light in the world. In order to be salt and light, as I said already, you have to first be good soil. You have to be able to receive the word of God so that you can be the salt and light in the world. Amen. Being salt is, equip, is, is equal, can equate to being different or being just evangelized. But light is like knowing and walking the path laid out before you. Your difference may be Notice, but if you don't walk the path, you just remain a different flavor. You just remain a different flavor. The reason we have lost those mountains is we have become salt without being light. We become salt without being light. 
We are salty. We may be different. We may be different, but we're not shining forth our light. In other words, we're not carrying out all the parts of the Great Commission. All the Great Commission means, the Great Commission means that we have to do both parts. We have to be salt and we have to be light. In other words, we got to shine the light upon the truth of the Word of God to those that we know. Amen. In our character, in our upbringing, we have to shine the light and look for those opportunities in order to interject. Jesus Christ into every conversation that we are dealing with. Amen. There are many reasons we've lost the seven mountains. I want to touch on three key reasons here real quick. First of all is disobedience. Because we have been disobedient to what God has told us to do. Then we've lost the mountains. Second is adhering to the gospel of salvation. All we're doing is adhering to the gospel of salvation, but ignoring the gospel of the kingdom. In other words, you become that salt, but you don't become the light. In order to propel the gospel of the kingdom forward, you have to be salt and light. Number three, disconnecting ministry work from secular work. We're so good at that. We're very good at disconnecting ministry work from secular work. Amen. Amen. First of all, disobedience, and we're going to talk about all three of those things as I get ready to wrap up. Disobedience. We were not displaced by force. We were not displaced by force. We gave the keys to the kingdom to the enemy by disobedience. We abandoned the mountains. We gave it over to the enemy to do what he wants to do with those mountains and on those mountains. We gave legal title to our, uh, of our dominion, our arms were not twisted. We gave legal title of dominion to the enemy. Our, our, our arms were not twisted, our hearts were willing to listen, and we were displaced by conversation, not force. We were displaced by conversation, but not force. Disobedience always leads to displacement. Can I get an amen? Disobedience always leads to displacement. Disobedience always leads to dislocation. Amen. Amen. The second thing, adhering only to the gospel of salvation but ignoring the gospel of the kingdom. Listen, the gospel of salvation is the most important thing that we can have to adhere to the gospel of salvation. But what we have to understand, the gospel of salvation is just the tip of the blessing. It's just the tip of the blessing. I often talk to people and I talk to them about being uh, the difference between being a convert and being a disciple. The word convert sounds just awesome. It just sounds like it's more powerful than disciple. It sounds like it's more powerful. But a convert is someone who has been converted, but they're not producing the fruit that they need to produce in terms of bringing other people to Christ. Bringing other people to Christ. Amen. Amen. Whereas a disciple is sold out. A disciple is totally focused on the things of God. A disciple is always seeking someone else to bring up to a level that he's at so that they can go forth and spread the gospel. Amen. Amen. So the gospel of salvation is just the tip of the iceberg. It's the tip of the blessing. What the Lord did on the cross resulted not only in our salvation, but it resulted in us receiving the keys to the kingdom. In other words, the keys to those seven mountains. And it was appointed back to us what Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says about our overall assignment. Now, throughout this series, I'm going to be talking about the gospel of the kingdom uh, and the a lot, just a lot. I'm going to be talking about the gospel of the kingdom of Lot. The reason I'm going to be talking about the gospel of the kingdom, the reason I'm going to be presenting this teaching series again is because I feel as if God wants us to get ourselves in position for when he comes back. The Bible says he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. What that means is that we have to be the church that's working in order to clean up things so that God will be able to receive his bride without a spot or a 
blemish. So I'm going to be talking about the gospel of the kingdom a lot throughout this series. Amen. So therefore, just be prepared to receive and listen to the gospel of the kingdom I'm going to be talking about. We have to live life to the fullest extent of the dominion mandate. That's also upon adhering to the gospel of salvation, but ignoring the gospel of the kingdom. In order to, in order to reach other people for Christ, we have to live our lives to the fullest. We cannot have these moments where we are not saved. We cannot be having these moments where we have allowed Jesus to take a vacation. We cannot be having these moments where well, I'm saved until so-and-so steps on my toes the wrong way. We got to be totally sold out for the kingdom. And because we're not totally sold out for the kingdom, this is why we have lost the keys and we have lost, we have lost our mountains. Amen. Amen. Third thing. Disconnecting ministry work from secular work. Yeah, we do it. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. I was I was talking on um, on this morning. I was working. I was doing some work, and I didn't have my actual work phone with me. Um, so uh, my personal cell phone. I was receiving phone calls on my personal cell phone from things that were work related, and I thought nothing of it. But my personal cell phone has this message. It says, this is Dr. Shape, the pastor of Interceding Christian Center. Uh, if I'm not available, leave a message. And it goes on and it says, God bless you and you have a great day. And it leaves a blessing. And I thought nothing of it when I did that recording. I did put some thought into it. But I didn't think in terms of how much those little words may bless somebody who's having a bad day. Having a bad day. This was work related. This was work related. Someone called my work cell phone and I wasn't able to answer at the time they called so they automatically went to voicemail. And when I got a chance to call back and talk to them, before I could even talk about the business at hand, she began to talk about how encouraged that little simple message was to her. It wasn't a separation of the two things. I thought nothing of her or them calling my work cell phone. Thought nothing of it. But when she called, she talk, told me about how blessed it was to her. And other people have told me similar things, such as, wow, that really encourages me. One reason that, 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 it, that encouraged them is because I believe firmly, I believe strongly that we should not separate out <laughs> secular work from ministry work. Yes, ministry work has its place, but we're always supposed to be, as Jesus said, man ought to always pray and not faint. We have to always be in our Christian character when we deal with other people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, the chief instrument that the enemy uses, the disconnecting ministry work from secular work. Let me talk about that some more. That's a chief instrument that the enemy uses to impede the gospel. It's the separation of church and and work. There's been a great argument going on uh, lately where people are talking about separation of church and state. And look, you have to understand what the founding fathers meant when they meant separation of church and state. Almost down to a person, every single one of those people who signed the Declaration of Independence, who signed the United States Constitution, were Christians, and it was known that they were Christians. But there were many denominations. There were Presbyterians, there were Catholics, there were Episcopalians, there were Lutherans, there were, uh, there were Baptists. There were people of different denominations. Those denominations were all together called just different churches. So one church or denomination was not going to be honored above another one. That's what it meant. Just in case you want to know, amen. It wasn't a separation of God and state. You cannot separate God out of the government. Oh, we're going to talk about that when we talk about the mountain of government. You cannot separate God out of the government and expect for godly blessings to follow you. Amen, amen. So the gospel of Christ is intended to be shared outside of the church walls. We're still talking about not disconnecting ministry work from secular work. It has, it was intended to be shared outside the church walls. A true saint can't have a church walk and then a Walmart walk. A true saint has to have a walk that's 
always consistent with the word. That's not saying that you have to run around and constantly just spout out and spew the word and because you become arrogant when you do that. No, no. It's just saying that your light should shine so brightly whereas people know that when their trouble comes, they can come to you and get a healing or breakthrough or something. It, it, it just means that. We got to be very careful not to allow ourselves to have those two separations. Uh, people who hug you at church but won't speak to you at the supermarket. That's not right. Uh, it's great to celebrate with like-minded people. Believe me, I love to celebrate with like-minded Christians. Amen. But you're celebrating with them is not getting anybody saved. Because the people you celebrate with are already saved. But you're, you're celebrating with them is just something that helps to edify you. But it should edify you to a point where as you go out and share the good news of Christ. Amen. Amen. We must go back to a time when prayer was not only allowed in public places, but prayer was encouraged in public places. Amen. The schools. When prayer left the schools, violence came into the schools. Amen. We have to be, we get back to a place and time where prayer was encouraged in the workplace. In the workplace. We have to get back to a place and time where, where prayer, prayer was encouraged at sporting events. And I say encouraged, not only encouraged, but prayer was expected. The game would not start without prayer. Amen. Amen. It was expected. You got to be very careful because you can have a church personality and a work personality. That's not right. It says that a, uh, a two-faced man is in all his ways. Oh, I don't have to repeat it, do it. Uh, unstable in all his what? Ways. Amen. So you have to have the same personality all the time. That is acting uh, uh, one way at church in a totally different way at work. Ethics learned and practiced at church should be ethics that are learned and practiced at the workplace. Ethics learned and practiced at church should be ethics learned and practiced at the workplace. Why did we lose those mountains? We lost those mountains because we have not been practicing what we have been preaching. We lost those mountains because we have hated the sinner and not the sin. We've lost those mountains because we have not cared enough and we have been hoodwinked and fooled into thinking that God does not care about the politics of this world. We, we've lost those mountains because we have gotten off track. Now is a time where we have to get back on track and back in line with what God wants for us to do. Amen? So, on next week, I'm going to continue on in the Seven Mountain series. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do, but you better tune in because it's going to be a blessing. It's going to open up your understanding about how the mountains apply. It's going to open up your understanding even to people who were representative of those mountains. Remember, there were seven different, seven different uh, segments of people that were defeated when the Israel, Israelites came into the Promised Land. So it's going to open up your understanding about even those people. Amen. Beloved, thank you for tuning in on this evening. I give God glory and praise for your tuning in. I pray that you learn something from this teaching here. And it got you to a point where you want to hear more of it. Amen. To God Almighty be the glory. Before I go, I would totally be remiss without offering this to you. Listen, I don't know who it is I'm speaking to. I'm not sure what it is you may have been going through. But I'm here to tell you that God still loves you. There's nothing that you can do that can change his love of you. David said, if I made my bed in hell, God will be there also. Why? Because he still loves you loves us he still loves us so listen whatever it is that you think you've done that will, has been unforgivable god said i will forgive you if you sincerely turn toward me you sincerely ask for forgiveness through my son jesus christ that's all you had to do beloved trust me if god is for you he's more than the world against you and trust me if you just reach your hand out unto him He'll reach two hands out unto you, and he'll pull you out of whatever it is that you have been in. He can do it. I promise you, I've seen him do it. He did it for me, and I know for sure he can, for sure and for certain, that he can and is willing to do it for you. It's a simple prayer. 
Father, forgive me. Father, I'm sorry. Father, uh, I invite Jesus into my life. Father, I renounce all the things of this world, the evil of this world, and I want to walk a different way. It's a simple prayer. And then you accept Jesus into your heart. Oh, God bless you. It'll change your life. Amen. To God Almighty be the glory. If you want to be a blessing to the Interceding Christian Center, you can be a blessing by going to our Givelify app, and you go download the Givelify app, and you're able to see the beautiful picture of my First Lady, First Lady uh, Elders, Tina Schaefer, and you can be a blessing to the ministry that way. Or if you want to do uh, a cash app, our cash app is dollar sign interceding cc dollar sign interceding cc to god almighty be the glory let me give you a prayer we're gonna go and get out of here amen father god in the name of your son jesus we thank you for this day we thank you for this time of sharing this teaching father god we're praying right now lord god that would touch hearts of those lord god who know not you lord god and lord god even those who know you father god but they get a deeper walk a deeper revelation of who you are father god lord god the, the, the apostles that are meant to be on those mountains lord god would take their rightful places we give you glory in advance for all you have done and all you're going to do in the name of jesus we pray thank god amen amen god bless you until next time beloved i'm looking forward to seeing you this is dr schaefer saying i love you and a thing you can do about it. God bless. I pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impact in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app in one of the apps or the Google store and look for Interceding Christians. Spirit intercede, we aspire to bring we people to spiritual knowledge and dust victory. God bless you. Jesus. Nurture babes in Christ.